Hi everyone, I'm doing my John Maxwell and focusing on leadership gold. So I'm doing my next chapter today. And this chapter is the toughest person to lead is always yourself. So when we look at our achievements and our failures, we have to be realistic about what we can achieve and what we can't. And for me, I think one of the things that I see as a failure was working on a board. So my mindset is very much an African mindset. When I think about the challenges being faced in Africa, when I think about how solutions are approached, I think about how I grew up, the challenges we had, what we went through. And sitting on the boards here, it's like pulling teeth because people think in Western mindsets and their problems are minute compared to the problems that people in Africa have. So when you make a suggestion or a solution, they're like, no, we don't think that will work. We don't think that's a good idea. And in the end, I just get frustrated and I'm like, you know what, just do whatever you want. I'm not going to sit on this board anymore. And I just walk away. And that's happened a few times. Um, it's happened also with a board with Greener City, where a few people had this vision to have rooftop gardens, like in New York. And they're like, oh, they have these in New York and it will be fantastic and, you know, we'll get this going and it will be good for the community. And I said to them, that's not going to work here. First of all, where are we going to get the funding? Canadians are very risk averse. They're not going to want to invest in that. And secondly, how are we going to maintain that? And they're like, oh, no, it will work. It will work. We didn't get the funding. It didn't go ahead. So you have to understand your culture. That for me was a failure because I tried to communicate it. I tried to get my point across. It didn't work. And also when talking about the issues facing Africa, for example, treatable diseases, things like TB, malaria. I know because I grew up there. But when I tell people here, they don't want to listen. They're like, you need to learn to take direction before you can give direction. So I'm like, there's no point telling you because you really are not interested in the real life challenges. You think that you know what's best and you want to impose those challenges or those solutions on the challenges that are in Africa. So again, I just, I get frustrated and I say, you know what, just forget it. I'm not going to persuade these people. They should go and make a trip to Africa and then see the reality for themselves. So that's, that's one thing that I think about is communication. And I keep trying to improve my communication and how I speak, changing my words. It's the same thing in the call center. Changing my words, changing how I speak. When people say, are you insinuating this and that? I say, no, I'm not insinuating anything. I'm telling you, for example, when we do refunds, this is the amount of time it takes. I'm not insinuating it takes two to seven days. It does take that time. The next um, one is, where do you need to grow? So John Maxwell says, have you considered volunteering? Because it requires patience, followership and self-discipline. So I've done a lot of volunteering over the years and I've learned when it's my turn, I participate, I'm patient, I wait till I get the next opportunity and I do it with others. So it's not something I'm doing completely on my own and I don't like doing things completely on my own. I like being part of a group, I like being part of a team and then when we achieve something and we accomplish something, we celebrate it together. So I think volunteering is a good way for finding out where we need to grow and then working on those areas because you can do it in a safe environment and you can learn from others as well. And the third one is about taking advice. So taking advice is a tricky one because there are generational differences as well. So people that are a lot older had different challenges compared to the challenges today. Younger people have a lot more challenges than people did before, going through a war, living through 
depressions, all those things we can learn from other people. But we also have to learn when to take the advice and how to apply it so that it works for us. And I think it's good to take advice and to learn. So for example, with me in my situation, when I had my harassment case, the police told me, always keep your door locked. Now in Canada, we feel safe. We don't necessarily always keep the doors locked or the windows closed or, because you feel safe, it's a safe country. But once the police told me that, I make sure as soon as I come in, I lock the doors. And because any building they can get into with an Allen key. The builders have a key, it's called an Allen key. They can open any door. So I make sure my door is locked and I take precautions. It's good to think about what advice we're given and whether that advice is good for us and whether it's going to benefit us. For example, if you're told don't upgrade your skills, don't learn, don't grow, there's no point in it, and you're a new immigrant, I wouldn't take that advice. I would say get a job, but keep making sure you're learning, you're growing, you're investing, because if you don't do it, nobody's going to do it for you. So those are the things on the chapter today, and it's about leading ourselves, and leading ourselves is the hardest because we have to focus on ourselves, we have to focus on where we need to grow, where we need to challenge ourselves, how we need to adapt to a new environment. Like for me, I always say I want to go back to England. Why? Because the culture between England and Zimbabwe is very similar. It's very logical. You take steps and you move forward. Here it's very emotive and it's about the emotions and focusing on the emotions. I'll give you an example. In Zimbabwe, if you fall down, your friends will laugh at you. They'll say, come on, get up. Let's go. Let's try again. You fall down here. Oh my God, the ambulance comes, the police comes, everybody comes, like helicopters, people are around you. So it's very different. Very, very different. But that's part of growing up there. It's part of the fact that we don't have all the facilities and everything that people have in the West. And we don't expect everybody to run to take care of us. We know that if we don't take care of ourselves, no one's going to take care of us. So we take care of ourselves to the best we can and we help others. We live in community. And we had a very strong Cohen community in Zimbabwe. We helped each other, we were there for each other. We went on trips together. We went to Vic Falls in Nyanga. We did a lot of things that were fun. And having fun is also part of leading ourselves. We can't be serious all the time. We have to make time to relax, to have fun, to enjoy our lives. And so for me, that's what I focused on, on my journey, on my strengths, my failures, where I need to grow. And I think it's good. I hope my friends enjoy it. And I hope that you all learn something from it and ask yourselves the questions and we all take direction. People who say, oh, you need to learn to take direction before you can give it. We've always taken direction from the time we were in school. And schools in Zimbabwe are very different to schools in Canada or the US or England. We were well disciplined. We had a lot of respect for our teachers and we kept to strict timetables. So we've always taken direction and we know how to take direction well. Maybe that's a North American thing where they're saying that you need to learn how to take direction before you can give it. Because with us, we grew up taking direction and we know how to take direction.